Hello and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall channel. This prophetic word comes from Rosangela Ate from Vancouver, Canada. It's time to cleanse the temple. Jesus loves. Jesus forgives. Jesus is merciful. Jesus is kind. But he is the personification of love. Somehow, these attributes have been completely taken out of context. They've been twisted by pop culture and sadly, even those that call themselves Christians. Christianity has become so watered down. Being a follower of Christ is more than just going to church on Sunday, listening to worship music, and wearing a t-shirt that says, Faith Over Fear. The Son of God has been prepared as a long-haired, hippie-like, soft-spoken dude who's okay with whatever you want to do. Yes, Jesus loves sinners, but he's holy. He's righteous. Jesus is not our buddy. Jesus is God. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega. He is the refiners of fire. He is enthroned above the heavens. We should fall on our faces and worship him with awe and honor. Yes, he is our friend, but don't make the mistake of thinking that he will tolerate our double-mindedness forever because he won't. The Jesus who came in humility and peace riding on a colt is the same Jesus who is also filled with righteous anger as he walked through the temple. He fashioned a whip to drive out those selling and buying. He's the same Jesus who flipped the tables of the money changers. The same one who was consumed with passion for his father's house, which was being used as a marketplace. Once Jesus comes to live in us, there is no place for unrighteousness and double-mindedness. Once he's in, he will stir up all the uncleanliness in us. We cannot serve two masters. Only the fiery presence of Jesus can cleanse us. Only he can make the darkness flee. When Jesus enters our heart, his very presence will bring to the surface everything that is of the flesh. Just as extreme heat brings to the surface and burns impurities in metal, so does the Holy Spirit, the fire of God. When the light comes in, it dispels the darkness. These two things cannot coexist. The presence of one means the absence of other. 2 Corinthians 6, 14-15 there is an internal battle, a deep struggle to let go of those things. Everything can become a stumbling block on our way to freedom. Everything that takes our time and focus away from Jesus is dangerous. Many of us are still fighting with our own flesh after years of being saved. We don't want to let go of the altars we've created in our lives. Some of us have made altars and idols of our ministries or money, our family and friends, our businesses or our homes and traveling or possessions, even unforgiveness. And pain can become an idol. Am I talking to anyone? We hold on to these. We hold on to them for so long. They almost become part of who we are. Letting go is scary, no matter what or who it is that we are letting go of. But God always rewards obedience. We can trust him. His plans for us are way better than our own. He is the righteous judge. He will vindicate us. He is coming in full force, driving out everything unclean, flipping the altars that we've created in our own life. He's coming for his remnant. We are the temple of God. How can we expect to fulfill our calling if we're struggling with the same things that we're struggling with from years ago? Psalm 103.8 God won't be mocked. His patience has a limit. We can see this all throughout the Bible. When people did not repent, he dealt with their sin. The time of taking advantage of his goodness and patience is up. He's sifting the wheat from the chaff. The Lord is about to expose and bring to light and drive out and overturn. He's cleansing the church one member at a time. If you desire to be part of his kingdom, you need to, sur to surrender to him and to his plans. There's no other way. Obedience is everything. It's not enough that we have our lamp on. You need extra oil. You need to be prepared. You need to overflow sanctification, consecration, dying to ourselves. This is what it takes. Letting go of our own agendas. Are we ready to do that? Are we ready to relinquish all? He's asking us today, will you take up your cross and follow me no matter what? Lord, it's so easy for us to look outside and say, hey, Lord, cleanse that temple. Hey, Lord, over there needs some cleansing. So grateful for our sister Rosangela for turning it inward, Father. You, you start with us in our own hearts first. Start with my heart. Cleanse the temple of my heart, Father. Cleanse the temple of my friend's heart. Lord Jesus, that there would be no unclean thing, unpure thing. 
that, Lord, only the things that would please you, the words, the meditations of our heart, Lord, that only those things would remain that truly please you. Lord, I know that in my flesh to pray that prayer is, I don't know, I don't even know that I know fully what I'm saying. But Lord, I thank you that consecration, sanctification is ours. Help us to die to ourselves. Help us to pick up our cross today, Father, and follow you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.